have your Bible today, would you open with me, please, to the book of John, that big John. Uh, the old mountain preacher referred to the different books. He said, uh, uh, Big John, One-Eyed John, Two-Eyed John, Three-Eyed John. That's the way they were with the old Roman numerals in the old Bible uh, that they used to have. But I want us to deal in chapter 4. And I could say that I'll take the first uh, 42 verses and give a... Uh, uh, explanation of each verse, but uh, I think we'd be here through the night service if I did. So I'm not going to. I'm just going to take a little hunk out of the middle. And if you'll notice for our text, verse 28 and 29, this is dealing with the woman at the well. And it is a uh, text that has been used, but the truth of the matter about the text of the Bible, they're just inexhaustible. You cannot exhaust the text that God has put in this old book that we call the Bible. And I'm referring to the King James Bible. That's all that we use around here. And uh, for the folks that are watching by the way of YouTube, uh, we believe that it is the preserved Word of God. And we believe that it's the uh, Word of God from cover to cover. And we believe the cover of the Holy Bible. But uh, notice in verse number 28 and 29, the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith unto the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did is not this the Christ. I want to call today uh, from this text and to derive from it a message if water pots could talk. Most of us have heard some country songs, whether we want to admit it or not, but we've heard songs. And for instance, and I promise I won't sing it, if walls could talk, they would probably tell a lot about the heartaches and the different things that uh, uh, people have experienced. And uh, I want us to deal today uh, what with the, the subject of if the water pot could talk. This verse of scripture tells us, and it is a wonderful account of what the Lord Jesus did uh, that day when the woman at the well came, and most of us refer to her by that uh, reference, she is the woman at the well. Jesus, I believe, uh, some Bible scholars said that, uh, have said, and uh, we use this as a reference, that he walked 60 miles or so uh, out of his way. Uh, I know he walked 60 miles to be baptized, uh, they say. And, uh, but he went out of his way. And he said, I must needs go through Samaria. And the reason that he went through there was because of a woman, a woman that needed to hear what he had to say. Uh, I believe that the Lord Jesus, uh, he had all the attributes of God the Father. He knew exactly. He was God, let me simply say, when Mary held him in her arms as a little baby. He was God when he walked the streets of Nazareth as a little child. He was God when he walked out there to the tomb of Lazarus and said, Lazarus, come forth. He was God when they nailed him to an old rugged cross. He was God when they, uh, 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 when uh, he came out of that tomb uh, victorious and uh, through the death, burial, and resurrection, we have a risen Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was God, but yet he was concerned about one individual. Let me say that he's concerned about you. If you were the only person in this world, the Lord Jesus Christ would have went to Calvary's cross and let them nail him to that old rugged cross. And there he would have atoned. He atoned for the sins of every individual and made the door of salvation open that people by faith 
could trust what he did on the cross of Calvary. But I want us to go back to and look at this woman's sordid past. I want us to see her and as uh, many people have seen her. We find a woman that the Bible declares concerning her that she had had five husbands and the man she was with then was not her husband. Now, uh, there are some folks that feel like if you have been through the divorce court that you are, uh, uh, you're done, you're washed up on the beach, God can't ever use you. I know of a church that I was preaching in in uh, <clears throat> Dayton, Ohio one time, and the dear pastor told me of a, of a woman in that church, and he said, now, I don't know what all in her past. I know she had a rugged past, but I want you to know she's one of the best bus workers that I've got in this church. Uh, she is, will fill up a bus and bring little kids in from the streets of Dayton, Ohio, and she will give them the gospel and will see them walk the aisle and trust Christ as Savior. I want you to know I don't care about people's sordid past. I don't care what's been in the, the past on them. If they have been blood washed and bought by the Lord Jesus Christ, which they are, I, they are welcome. And God can find a seat. God can find a place. God can find something they can do. And he can say, hey, they are white. They are, they are washed by the blood of the Lamb. And they're going to heaven. And all the devils in hell can't keep them out. Well, here was a woman that uh, I want us to notice today. But uh, you say, boy, if that water pot could talk, it would tell us something. Yeah? And sometimes the water pots in our life could tell something. But we'd rather they just keep their mouth shut, wouldn't we? Well, does you see, first of all, we noticed that she left. Uh, if, we could, if we could talk to that water pot, I think it would say, well, she left me because of the lie that uh, he offered her. Jesus said, I give you eternal life. He said, if you will trust me, there will be a well of water springing up in your soul that will, that will uh, go through all eternity. Now, there are some folks who believe that uh, eternal, that, uh, that God uh, saves us, gives us eternal life uh, after we get to heaven. I want you to know the Bible says, he that believeth upon the Son hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. She is there uh, in the hottest part of the day, knowing what we know uh, later, we realize that she comes there by herself because other women had ostracized her. They're not going to look at her. They're not going to be associated with her. And also, she was a Samaritan. You see, the Lord Jesus, he's willing to cross racial boundaries. He's willing to cross uh, boundaries that other folks do not want to cross. And the last of all, we find that she had a some she had a somewhat troubled life in the realm of men. You know, uh, all of her life, uh, it was not the most pleasant thing. Now she may have been about the, like the lady who uh, made an application as a lemon picker. And so they said to uh, fill out this application. And so it said, that, what experience have you had in picking lemons? She said, I bought an Edsel. I bought a uh, uh, Falcon. I bought a Pinto. And uh, I better not say this for them. And I prayed it for a certain president. And I definitely have been picking lemons ever since. Well, you're supposed to laugh there. Am I going to have to put a thing up here except applause or something? <laughs> We're just breaking in new to, to um, recording here. But uh, here was a woman that apparently she had had five husbands. That means five times she had went into the divorce court. Five times that she had, uh, had to go hire a lawyer. Um, or else that uh, she, no doubt, uh, got the, the uh, long end of the stick. But uh, here was a 
required of, uh, of sus uh, sustenance. Jesus told, uh, said, answered and said to her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep, from whence thou uh, hast thou uh, that living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? You see, a life of satisfaction. Uh, in verse uh, 13 and 14, Jesus answered and said to her, Whosoever drinketh this water shall, uh, shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. I want you to know today on the authority of God's book, the Bible, that when you drink of the well of salvation, you will never again hunger for salvation. God saves eternally by his grace. How long does he save? He saves us. We get eternal life the moment that we trust Christ as Savior. And we have it for all eternity. Salvation, uh, uh, eternal life doesn't start the minute we get to heaven. Eternal life starts the minute that we trust Jesus as our Savior. And also, we find that she uh, was given a life of service. You see, but whosoever drink of this, of this water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Now, this old gal, uh, there are probably some folks with some churches that would say, because she'd been divorced, that she wasn't, uh, you're, you're not allowed to fill up the track rack. But I want you to know, when God saves you by his grace, uh, there are some things, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you hunger and thirst after God, God will find a place in the kingdom of God that you can work and do the things of God. Now there are certain things that, that the Bible, I believe, tells us that uh, people uh, cannot do. They're not meeting the qualifications. But I want you to know you can make up for it. You can find something. You can find somebody to go and tell about the Lord Jesus Christ. You can share your testimony and God will use it. God will tell and God will show what has happened in your life that there has been a change by the grace of God. Well, how's your life today? If you were to interview the water pot in your life, what would they tell us? All, all of you still holding your water pot? You know what? You turn that water pot loose and realize that just like this woman, she left her water pot there. Whatever your past is, take it to Jesus. Leave it with him. Take your burdens to the cross and leave it there. And she left me because of the leadership he offered. You know what? We see although the water pot was a source of comfort and confidence, it couldn't give her any direction. She was unable to find any leadership for her life in that water pot. But I want you to know she found somebody that could give her what she was, that what she had been looking for for a long time. She could satisfy, he could satisfy the longing in her soul. We, she found leadership in her choices. In verse 15 to 18, the Bible says, the woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and uh, come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou uh, hast now is not thy husband. And, uh, and that says uh, thou truly. 
Jesus knew more about her than what she knew about herself. She made extremely bad choices in life. There may be people listening to this uh, video today. You may have made some bad choices, but I want you to know when you lay it at the feet of the master and walk away from your water pot, you can know that you have somebody that will never leave you nor never forsake you. Leadership in her concern, verse 19 and 20, the woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. We've got a lot of folks today that holler praise and worship. Let me tell you something. Us Baptist folks have been doing praise and worship for the last 2,000 years because I want you to know some old folks, some, some old soul would get up and shout the victory of, of God and their testimony and praise the Lord and, and walk around the church and give God the praise for what he'd done in their life. That's nothing new to us, folks. We don't have to have a, 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 a band behind us and a, and a rock and roll beat behind our singing to enjoy the Lord and uh, to enjoy his presence. Uh, we're, uh, uh, we're just plain old traditional uh, people who believe that God has a right to have the right place in our life. And uh, I believe that singing ought to glorify the Lord. If it moves your feet before it does your heart, you better check and see if there's something wrong with your, uh, with your music. It's just that simple. And so leadership in her concerns. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Now, uh, Jesus was more than that. He was greater than a prophet. Uh, a few weeks ago we preached about Solomon. The greater than Solomon has come. And so uh, she, like all of us, are searching for someone or something and, sometime, and somewhere to worship. I want you to know what is worship. Worship first was mentioned in the book of Genesis, chapter 22. And, and, Jake, uh, and uh, Abraham said, Be in the land, we'll go yonder and we will worship. And we will return. God already said, I want you to give him your only son as a sacrifice. I believe he believed that if God took him, God would resurrect him from the dead. You see, uh, worship is based, I believe, on giving and sacrifice and resurrection power. And that's exactly what Jesus is capable of doing. You see, he, he's capable of giving leadership in confusion. She got more concerned about the where of worship and the how of worship. Uh, she got more concerned about the wrong issues. But uh, he said in verse 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. There's some folks that are not concerned about the truth, are You know what? You ought to do it according to the word of God. If, our, if your worship does not exalt the risen Savior that uh, lived and died, and uh, resurrected from the grave, then uh, your, if yours is just to stir the emotion, it's not of God many times. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. <coughs> In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. You see, God wants to direct us on the right way to worship. And I want you to know that that must be in and through and by the power of the Holy Spirit of God and in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our praise. And then she, he would say, she left me because of the love that he offered her. I want you to know that God loves a sinner. God hates his sin, but he loves a sinner. And God wants you to know that he is willing to forgive 
And he's willing to take your past and put it into the sea of forgetfulness and under uh, as, as deep as the, as, the, as the ocean. He doesn't say, I'll put your sins on the back side of the moon where somebody get in a fine ship and go back there and say, uh, yeah, there, there's your sins, I found them. But he put them in the depths of the sea, in uh, the sea of forgetfulness as we express it uh, many times. And uh, Jesus simply said unto her, I that speak unto thee and he. They were looking for a Messiah to come. I want you to know that my Messiah has already come. Uh, he came and died on an old rugged cross and went to a tomb, and that tomb is empty today, and uh, he is coming back someday on the clouds of glory. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Harold Leak mentioned one time uh, in a song, he said uh, something to the effect that uh, he went away on a cloud, but he's going to come back on a, on a white horse. And he tied that to the Lone Ranger. You always ride off on the white horse. And, uh, but someday, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, he's coming back in a cloud, but a few years later, he's coming back on white horses and we're going to be riding with him. And that's a victory that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything came into focus for her. Uh, she saw, she now realized that true love, uh, what it really was. She had somebody that would never leave her or never, never forsake her. And in the Word of God, the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4, verse 14 and 19, the Bible says, And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he is God. And we have, have known and believed uh, the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts about fear. Because fear hath torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. There was nothing in my life nor yours that caused God's love to be attractive to me. But his nature, it's his nature because the Bible says God is love. And you know there are some folks who believe and they, they've been saved as I say more times than a Microsoft Word document or they think they have. And they live in fear that they're going to do something that God's going to kick them out of the family. God's not going to do that. Just as sure as you stand and from the pages of God's black black book the we call the Bible, he that believeth upon the Son hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. You say, how secure are you, Brother Mattis? I'm secure enough, as old Billy Kelly used to say, that I could swing over hell by a rotten corn stalk and spit in the devil's eye and know that I was eternally saved. That's how secure we are as the children of God. God's love will make you willing to share uh, God's love. We see, you watch what this chapter goes on to say. Now, if a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he's a liar. Uh, for he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him that he whom God loveth, uh, he whom uh, uh, he whom he hath not seen, and this commandment have we uh, from him, that he who loveth God 
love of his brother also. You know, God says, hey, I'm going to love you, and I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to love other people because that's in the nature. That's in your nature. You see, when we come into the kingdom of God, when we come into the family of God, when we come under that umbrella of grace, if you please, and that's where we are, that day, that woman, the water pot said, she is not the same. There was something. She met a man. And they said, oh yeah, she'd run off with other men before. No, but this was a different one. This was one that promised her dividends that was out of this world. And, but you could also catch on while you're living in this world. Here's a woman that was ostracized from society. You know, the apostles probably looked out there and they saw Jesus and they said, what's he doing talking to her? And uh, I think on, on one occasion, they did the same thing. They went into the, in the town uh, to buy some bills. That translates into potted meat and a sausage and, and uh, saltine crackers and that good stuff that we got like from you go out fishing and rent dig it. Uh, that's, uh, you won't find that in the book, though, by the way. Uh, God didn't tell us what, what they went and bought. But Jesus said, uh, I've got meat to eat that you know not of. You see, his meat was doing the will of God. Now let me simply say, you need to leave your water pot and walk away. If you're listening to my voice today, let me talk just a minute. Let me share with you. God loves you. Christ died for you on the old rugged cross. As the piano begins to play, as Sonia comes to the piano, she begins to play just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. O Lamb of God, I come. And while the clamor remains on it, we've got enough uh, time. Uh, I trust today, people that are listening, that you would look to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're without Christ the Savior, that you would say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Right now I trust what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary as full and final payment of my sin debt before God. Would you do business with God today? Walk away from the water pump and start drinking of eternal life. I trust today that God would speak to your heart. God said, come now and let us reach the gate of sin the Lord. Though your sin be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as gold. Do you need to come and pray today? Maybe there's folks today that you know that without Christ as Savior, whether you pray back there or whether you come to the front of this church, that's between you and God. But I want you to today to realize, and I want you to pray, Holy Spirit of God, lay some soul upon my heart. And love that soul through me. We do today. Uh, we're looking for a wind bank of a service.